How many love Jesus in his house? <laughs> Paul said, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory. And we bless his name for being in his house one more time. There is nobody like Jesus. I'm going to ask you to turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. is a good God. Paul wrote to the church of Ephesus. In Ephesians chapter 6. And after dealing with the house, and after dealing with the church, and after dealing with the workplace, he gets to verse number 10. It's like the grand finale, 4th of July. Finally, my brethren, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We're going to stop there. 
Every head bowed. Father, we say thank you. We bless your holy name. We pray, God, that you give wisdom, that you give knowledge, that you give understanding. Help us in this fight. Help us to recognize that the work has been done and that we can walk in victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And everybody in this house, give him a hand praise. On New Year's Eve, we were in the book of Mark, chapter 5, talking about the man who was possessed with the legion of devils. I know going into this year, we need to understand that we're in a fight and we need to recognize the opponent that we're fighting. But having said that, we need to know that the victory has already been given to us. As we look at the fight that we're in, we recognize that it is the devil who we're fighting against. For the Bible has already said to us in the passage that we read that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. When you consider the word devil from the Old Testament. It is a word that's only used four times in those 39 books. When you look at the use of the word devil in the Old Testament, that word lasts E ream is how you would say that. La si ream. And I noticed that in every one of those four uses, you had the Hebrew letter that long went on the right side, which is the letter Lamet. In every one of those four uses. Because every time, and we will go into this more in the um, Bible class, in every use in the Old Testament, Leviticus 17, 7, 2 Chronicles 11, 15, it's always talking about doing something like sacrificing unto devils. And the Bible warns against doing that. The root of the word for devil, the one that jumped out at me, this word shade or shoed. When you look at the first letter, it just speaks of unto. When you speak at, look at the last two letters, in that Hebrew word, yod and mem, is just plurality. So when you break the word down, the Old Testament word for a demon, is simply two letters 
Shin, and Dallas. Everybody say Shin and Dallas. I didn't put the pictographs up there, but everyone at Turning Point knows that Shin is a picture of teeth. And in our King James Bible, the word Shin is translated teeth. Why would God assign the letter Shin to a devil? Because the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Thank you, Bradley. The devil doesn't mean you any good. He has come to devour. Devour your life to devour the opportunities in life, and hence the second letter in that word for a devil, shade, is the letter Daleth. And Daleth is translated in our Bible as a door. The Lord has opportunity for you. The Lord has expectations for you. And if we were on Price is Right, I think that's the right one. Sometimes when they get to the end of the show, at least when I watched it like 40, 50 years ago, you can pick door number one, or door number two, or door number three. And the demon or the devils that have been assigned in your life, their goal is to destroy that door being in your life. How many folks sit back and talk about when they're 80 or 90 years old, if I had just went a different way. If I had just made a different decision. If I had just listened. And there are so many individuals that can testify that because I made bad choices in my life, my opportunities were destroyed. And while the devil comes to destroy the opportunities in your life, he comes with trickery because he wants you to make bad choices. Hence, even the word for Satan and devil in the New Testament, it speaks of an accuser, but not just a false accuser, which is also translated false accuser. It is also translated a slanderer. And some folks have no idea what that means. In the Bible, God put people in position to call black, black, and white, white. And Paul called out Hymenaeus and Philetus. And John called out Diotrephus. And you go through the scripture, and they called different ones out. But when they called them out, what the Lord showed about him was true. The devil has come to trick, to deceive, to lie, to make you think right is wrong and wrong is right. 
But there is a God in heaven. And he walked on earth. And my mind goes back to 2 Timothy chapter 2, which we just mentioned on New Year's Eve. Where he said to us, the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. When we looked at the scripture in Mark chapter 5, he talked about those that were possessed with the devils. And when I say those, I say those because in Matthew chapter 8 verse 28, he didn't just talk about one man there that was possessed. But Matthew told you that there were two folks that were possessed with those devils. When you look at the devils in the New Testament, you have this word from Strong's. And what you see... Strong's 1139, the Amazominos, the Amazominos, you start to see something common throughout every one of those scriptures. You start to see in the first scripture, if you read on, he speaks about those which were, and it goes on to say, possessed with devils. That's Matthew 4, 24. Matthew 8, 16, possessed with devils. What's the next one? Matthew, is that 8, 28? Possessed with devils. What's the next one? They were, and the next one, Matthew 12, 22, they were, yeah, and then you get to one that reads a little bit different, Matthew 15, 22, and the daughter was what? Grievously vexed with the devil. And it will use one Greek word, and that one Greek word means that demon, for that is the root word of this word devil. It is a demon that possesses an individual. When you talk about possession by a devil, it means that devil has come in, has taken that person over, has them like a slave, has them imprisoned, and that devil is able to drive them. Literally, just like you drive a car, that demon is able to drive those individuals to do things. And so many times we're living in a world, this is a hyphen, where we want to medicate demons. We want to give demons time out. We want to put a sucker in a demon's mouth for them to be okay. And then five, ten years later, you find out that you still have the same problem. Because we're dealing with spiritual situations naturally. And even though you medicate somebody's body, that demon is still in there. And demon possession is real. Just listen to the news. Yeah. 
There's another word that is used, and that's the next alphabetical word, Strong's 1140. And when I looked at this one, I also seen a common theme. I know it's dark for some of y'all to be able to see that up there, but when I do a study, I like to read every scripture in the Bible that uses that word. And now when you start to look at this Greek word for demon, the Greek word is dahemon, I started again to see a common theme. And the first one, it said they have what? Cast out devils. And then in the next one, it said they have. And then in the next one, it said they. And then in the next one, it said they. Uh-huh. And then in the next one, it said they. When you got the Holy Ghost, we're not afraid of a devil. Because God has given you something on the inside to deal with the devil. The only thing that the Christian is supposed to do with the devil, it is not the fellowship with devils. It's not the party with devils. It's not to date devils. It's not to marry devils. But what the Christian is supposed to do, Jesus said, in my name shall you cast out devils. Somebody call his name right now say Jesus. Everybody in the the house that is saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to say you were possessed by the devil internally, but I will say what the book of Ephesians says in chapter 2. We were all the children of darkness even as others. We were of our, of our father the devil but then we met Jesus I've seen folks who worship the devil I've seen them on the news I've seen them here at turning point I've seen them on the streets I've seen them at the Y I've never seen one that has real happiness I've never seen one have real joy. I've never seen one who has the joy bells ringing in their soul. But what I have seen is people who God delivered from darkness, who is bound in all kind of sin, that when God set them free, they could tell you what joy, happiness, and Peace is about. Thank you, three. Those three remember. There's some folks that remember when you didn't have peace. But somebody give somebody a high five to save next to you. Let's say, but now I got it. No more chains holding me. <laughs> Not the devil's puppet anymore. Not being drugged to the 500 liquor store. When we bought this property. And then, no, no, no. When God gave us this property. Because, like I said so many times, there was a sold sign right out in front said, F.C. Tucker sold. And I told my wife, I said, God said, this is our property. She said, but it's sold. I'm like, that's God's problem. But God didn't stop 
with this 10 acres that was here. He kept adding, and now we're up to about 30 some acres, if you include the houses across the street. And I remember when we bought the liquor store. Right across the street on the corner at the light there. And a man stumbled in, already intoxicated, and uh, he looked, and he's wondering, where's the liquor? <laughs> because he looks, and two and ten at that time turned it into a Christian bookstore, and instead of bottles, there's Bibles. That's not just him. That's a whole bunch of folks in the house right now. Instead of bottles, there's Bibles. Instead of pipes, there's prayer. Instead of cigarettes, there's communion. So, you see these other words for devils, and I feel a series coming on. And then, he uses two more words in the New Testament from that word, Greek word, demon. He uses the one that speaks of folks who are devilish. See, he wrote this to the church. How many, no, no, raise your hand. That there's some folks in the church who's devilish. You don't want to call a child of God a devil, but they're devilish. Deviled eggs. <laughs> Got some folks who they're not fools, but they're foolish. And then the final word, Strong's 1142, which is the root of all the words we just seen from the New Testament. Again, the iman where we get the English word, a demon. And what I've seen in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, they run in packs. Demons are like gangbangers. And, and, and that's, that's, that's a real problem because if you get one, you're inviting everybody else over to your house. I'm going to say again as a warning and what I said when we was at Bowser, I called one of the sisters up and I said over the mic, I need to see you after service. And I said right on the step. And I said the folks the men, I'll be straight up, these unsaved fellas you invite into your house, I said they're bringing demons in the house with them. And I said those are going to get on your daughter. If you don't stop. On Tuesday night she brought her daughter up for prayer because her little girl who was in very low single digits some other little girl took her somewhere at school and did something to her. I call it turned her out. And now her mind was messed up. And so now on Tuesday, she's coming for prayer. And I told her it's because of the spirits that you're inviting in your house. You don't play with the devil. 
a lot of reasons why the stuff is going on that's going on in our houses is because we're playing with the devil. You want to be buddy because they're your buddies and so you invite the devil in your house that they brought with them. Had another one about a week later told her the exact same thing and she came home her daughter was about five years old and catches her daughter with a little boy trying to do something whatever something something they was trying to do brought him up for prayer and said the same thing you're inviting the devil in your house when what are we supposed to do what was that second one I put up there what did it keep saying you do what cast them out you get them out of your house and your house will flourish you get them out of your house and your house will be blessed you know what even in the church the devil has got to make up his mind do I want to be saved I'm not talking about the devil y'all imagine with the pitchfork and the tail I'm talking about two legged devils that drive themselves to church there gets a point where God requires you to make a decision. Do you want to do right or do you want to do wrong? Do you want to go to heaven or do you want to go to hell? This is a year for us to fight against the devil and to fight for the kingdom. That tomb of Gadarenes that we read, we seen that they run in gangs. He said, when Jesus asked him, what's your name? That devil spoke through the man and said, legions, because we're many. And like I said, I've heard, seen historically Different numbers that a legion, an army, a legion would mean. Anywhere, today I was reading anywhere from 5,000 to 20,000. If he lived up to his name, that would mean he had at least 5,000 demons in him. But Jesus don't care about that. He just wants you're free. Not only they run in gangs, and even we seen that the Bible said when a house is cleaned and garnished, and uh, he says when a devil has been cast out of a man, the Bible said he goes roaming throughout the world. And so it says that he comes back to the house that's been cleaned and garnished. If he sees it's clean, but it's not filled. The Bible said he goes get seven more devils worse than himself. He goes and gets some fellas. Worse than him. Again, a reason why you don't play with him. You get him out of your house and then you invite Jesus in. Because when you get Jesus in the house, the devil cannot return. That's fine, I'll talk to myself. But, let me go back up here for a second. All of those I just flashed through are the word demon in the Greek, which is what the New Testament was originally written in. 
But the other word that is translated devil, other than the one demon, is the word diabolos. That is the devil. That is the word dia, which is a Greek word means through, and then the word balos, which means to throw. So all the scriptures where you see 1228, all of these are the word diabolos. Somebody say diabolos. The word dia means through, prefix. Balos means to throw. And that old devil's job, the devil's job, is to throw fiery darts at you. He wants to set your world on fire. He wants to destroy you. So he keeps throwing stuff your way. And that devil is the one it speaks of in 2 Timothy chapter 2. When it speaks of the man that opposes himself, he said in that he may recover himself from the snare of the devil. What I see in scripture is that Diabolos, 2 Timothy 2.26, the devil, I'm talking about the big fella in hell, the Bible said when we see him, we're going to look at him and say, he's the one that overthrew the nations. We're going to be amazed, but that that little sissy was able to cause folks to do so much wrong. But the way that he does it is not because he has power over us. But what happens, the Bible said, is you oppose yourself. It never uses possession by devils or demons for a child of God. You cannot be saved, be filled with the Holy Ghost, and be possessed by the devil. Can't happen. So I don't have to worry about I heard something downstairs. Oh, Lord, I wonder if that's a demon. Who cares? I, I heard something or, or in my mind, in my mind, I think the devil's playing tricks with my mind. You're playing the biggest trick with your own mind. Telling yourself that he's got power to control your mind. He doesn't. If the devil was a mind reader... He would have never done something to you that you could recover from. Because everything that he throws at us that we overcome, it does not take us lower, it takes us higher. That's where Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, 7 and 8, but we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the worlds unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If the devil was smart, I spoke that message, had they known. If he was smart, he would have never participated in having Jesus crucified. Because Jesus took what the devil meant for evil and turned it for our good. Because the devil participated, 
His blood was shed that the choir sang about. And here we are. Have our sins remitted just because the devil doesn't have enough sense to do right. And there's a bunch of folks sitting here that the devil threw his best punch and even hits you sometimes and knocks you to the ground. And the Bible said, but the righteous man falleth seven times and rises up again. There's a whole bunch of folks here that are righteous, not because you never did anything wrong, but righteous. Look at somebody say, I got up. Somebody just think about one thing the devil did to you and just say, he shouldn't have did that. Think about something else he did and say, he shouldn't have did that. Because God, when the devil did that, God brought me out of that too. He's not all that. If he had sense, he would have just left you alone. Your praise wouldn't be at the level it is right now. Your testimony wouldn't be at the level it is right now. If he just left you alone. A lot of us, if he just left us alone, we would not even have been looking for God. But it's the trouble that we went through. Where we said, there's got to be something more than death. Here's a news flash for somebody who's still stuck. He's going to bring you out of that too. He's going to deliver you from that too. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against us the Bible said, in judgment thou shalt condemn. He said, this is the heritage of the children of the Lord. He didn't say stuff won't happen. He said, but you're going to come out of that too. <laughs> That's your heritage. It's in the will. It's in his testament. I'm more than a conqueror. He's given me the victory. If God be for us, who can be against us? I can do all things through Christ. It's in the will. Do you know how many folks that get hooked on drugs and it goes with them to their grave? But do you know there's some folks in here who are hooked on drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, Sex, violence, they was hooked on all kind of crazy stuff, but now they're hooked on Jesus. <laughs> I'm almost done for today. He said the servant must teach them in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Because what the devil does, he's a deceiver. The Bible calls the spirits, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils and he doesn't tell you the truth. Just look at Eve. The Bible speaks of his trickery. He seduced her. She messed up. 
How? She listened to him. Some folks want to believe a lie. The Bible says if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Somebody say snare. Out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. I know I mentioned that, but I, I want everybody to turn there real quick. I want you to see that, 2 Timothy 2.26. Verse 25, they oppose themselves. Verse 26, out of the snare of the devil. Diabolos, Satan himself, not just sending a demon or a devil to do his work. But there's some folks that Satan himself gets involved with. Who does he get involved with? Well, 1 Corinthians 7 says the married couple who are committed to fasting and prayer. He said, but in 1 Corinthians 7, but come together again, lest you be tempted by Satan. And you would think, wait a minute. I just fasted and I just prayed. And I had this long time of consecration in my house with my spouse. And then who shows up at the door? 1 Corinthians 7 says that's when Satan himself shows up. I, I, I seen that years ago. That it's not always like some would think a hypocrite. Or like some would think... Um, the weakest one in the church that falls into sin. Sometimes it's the one who's the most prayed and fasted up. Why? Because here they are, they're thinking they're this high in God. And the devil knows he doesn't have the power to overthrow you. And so what he does then is use trickery, but Ephesians 6 and 11 said, we're not ignorant. I thank God I'm not ignorant concerning this. May be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we are not ignorant concerning his devices. Closing. Wiles. Greek word is methodia. <laughs> Somebody tell your neighbor, I don't even have to tell you, you don't even have to know Greek. The Greek word for wiles of the devil is methodia, methodia. What does wiles mean? He already comes with a plan. And guess what? Because there's no temptation taking you but such as is common to man, he doesn't come with something new. That's why... God can give somebody insight who has spiritual sense that this ain't nothing but a trick of hell. That's why sometimes parents can see when that dude shows up at your door, you'd be like, mm-mm, that ain't the one right there. 
I'm getting you up out of here. Um, it ain't just the dudes. Can I tell on me? I did it at our, um, when I spoke to our teachers. At one time at work, the devil tried to set me up. And um, a little foreign girl, and she lived in the complex I lived in. And so she's like, can you take me to the job? Sure, I'm going that way. It's in a different city. And somebody worked, put us together to ride together. And then at lunchtime, all of a sudden, after a couple of weeks, she, um, she does not have a car to go out to lunch. So guess what? Can I ride with you to McDonald's? Sure. There was no ill intent. There was no wrong motive. And now can I ride to work, from work, to lunch? And uh, my boss called me in. And he said, we really have uh, a lot of hope for you at this company, Diamond Shamrock. I'm a co-op at the time. Hadn't even started working in full time, hadn't even graduated. Uh, we really got a lot of hope for you at this company, but let me tell you, we got a rule here. You don't get your bread where you get your meat. And the ones who went over your head, good. <laughs> He's like, that'd be real foolish because there's no way you can focus on your job and focus on dating at the job. And he said, and I know you're not. He said, I know you're not. He said, but the perception could be. And I told her when she said, uh, you know, what time you leave and go home, you get another ride home. <laughs> you get another ride to work tomorrow? No, you're not going to lunch. I don't care if your belly shakes hands with his back bone. We done with that. I didn't see it as a trick. But after that, and then after life, man, you start to get to where you say, uh-uh, seen this before ain't happening, not on my watch. The devil's a lie. I will fight the devil. And so, <laughs> come back Tuesday. 2 Timothy 2, he speaks of that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. I've watched history, watched history in the church. Some folks, the only reason why they're not is because the devil is somewhere else. Next opportunity that surfaces just like the one they just got out of, they'll say yes to that too. For the Bible said there are some that are taken captive by him at his will. Looks like after one time you slapped me in my face. The next time I should see it coming. It looked like if I got slapped twice, the next time I should see it coming. It looks like after three times, the next time I should see it coming. He doesn't have the power. He can't possess any of you who've been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. 
but he can trick you. But we're not ignorant. God, help us in 2019. See it coming. God bless you. Come on. Down.